Um, I was first diagnosed in 1989 um, after having a lot of the symptoms of diabetes, but I wasn't really sure what you know the symptoms were leading to. I knew something was wrong. Um, hungry, well, I was hungry all the time. I was going to the bathroom practically every hour. Thirsty all the time. Um, depression um, and a lot of um, lethargy. So I knew something was off. You know, I went to the doctor. He immediately diagnosed it as uh, type two diabetes and put me on metformin. And it was like you know somebody flipped a switch. You know, so many of the symptoms went away. I wasn't thirsty anymore. I wasn't going to the bathroom every hour. It was like the miracle drug. Type two, the, another name for it, they call it is adult onset. And that typically comes about either through genetics or through poor um, diet and exercise. Um, and that comes on sometime as an adult. It varies. Some people get it when they're 40, 50, 60 years old. Other people get it like me when I was in my, in my 30s, early 40s. The treatment for type 2, depending upon the severity, um, you don't necessarily need to go on insulin right off the bat. Some people will never go on insulin. It all depends on how well uh, the other medications can manage those blood sugar levels. Some people that will stay on a drug like metformin uh, for the rest of their lives um, and be in control. Others make the progression from you know metformin as a pill to to insulin, um, and then whether or not they stop insulin you know, is largely dependent upon how much effort they put into controlling the disease. Well, I mean, you know, frankly, it it ended my career in Washington. Between the Crohn's disease and the diabetes, um, I was a pretty sick puppy. And I had a really high stress job uh, in commercial real estate in Washington. I was controller of a uh, subsidiary of publicly traded, one of the largest in the country, publicly traded real estate companies. And I had a huge staff and a lot of demands. And uh, I just couldn't handle it. I didn't have the energy. Um, and I was, I was having, between the diabetes and the Crohn's, I was having attacks of Crohn's disease every two or three weeks that would put me out of work for at least a day, if not longer. Um, and I just said, you know what, life's too short. And by that point, this now we're talking about early 2000s, I was on 15 medications for the diabetes, uh, including insulin. I had progressed to that. Um, my endocrinologist in Washington, in hindsight, did me no favors. Um, he wasn't very adept at dealing with the nutritional side of, of living with diabetes. And, you know, I would ask him, what diet should I be on? What nutrition program should I be on? And he would say, eat everything you want to just in moderation. And I now know, having done the research I've done, working with the American Diabetes Association, opening a facility like this, working with our staff, that's not the answer. You know, going from five chocolate chip cookies at a snack to two chocolate chip cookies is not the answer, at least it's not for me. My answer is zero chocolate chip cookies. And he wasn't very good at helping me through that process. All he basically wanted to do was layer more and more medications on me. And uh, I got really frustrated with that. I, I liken my recovery, if you will. I'm still a diabetic, but I'm no longer on any medications for it. I take an herbal supplement that helps monitor and uh, regulate um, blood sugar, but I'm off of insulin. I'm off all of the 15 medications I was on. Uh, I've lost in the process about 120, 130 pounds, uh, and I managed to keep it off now for, uh, it's a little bit over four years. Um, so, you know, I'm living with it. I'll always have it, but for me, it's under control. You know, I, I think an awful lot of people aren't totally educated. In it. I think they suffered from what I suffered from for many years, which is a lack of exposure to good, healthy information about how to manage this disease. You know, I, I think an awful lot of people are told just to eat less of everything. Um, and it doesn't work that way. You have to have an education. And I think that's what I brought to this community. Um, with our advocacy for diabetes and the American Diabetes Association is an avenue to educate people. Um, and that's what I'm most proud of. You know, can everybody get off of insulin someday if they're a type 2 diabetic? Probably not. Can you reduce your insulin requirement? Absolutely. 
um, and make it easier to live with. I mean, that's the thing. It's no fun to have to sit in a restaurant and you know inject insulin into your stomach before you eat. There's nothing fun in it. So to the extent you can either reduce the amount of insulin or reduce the frequency that you need insulin, um, it's just going to be a much better lifestyle. And, you know, we have a much higher incidence of type 2 diabetes locally than even the state of Maryland national average. Uh, Tolba County has a, has a higher incidence of type 2 diabetes. It could, because, it could be because the population is more skewed towards older individuals um, or what, I don't know. But that's one of the reasons why I felt a facility like this was so important. Uh, Parthstone is the largest um, sponsor of the American Diabetes Association on the entire Delmarva Peninsula. And we're really, really proud of that. Uh, and I think they're doing a great job. I think they're making a huge impact, um, not just in big cities, but in local communities as well. They're, locally, they're getting involved in a lot of faith-based organizations, faith-based faith organizations, churches and things like that, to get educational programs going through that, that avenue um, to try to reach people. Again, especially African-American and Hispanic populations are at much higher risk uh, than Caucasian. So getting the word out to all of these, these groups is really critical.